welcome to the show. That is the Cosmos Cup. It will be going to the champions of the Cosmos Copa, one of the biggest amateur adult soccer tournaments in the United States. They're calling it the World's Game in the World City, a great soccer tournament. Let's take a look. It's the third year that the tournament's on, and it's a... Uh a mix of soccer, the passion for the sport, the community, and the culture of the sport all wrapped into one. New York's Mini World Cup. Uh, there's two co-founders, uh, Spencer Dornitzer and Chris Noble. Um, they came to me about three years ago. It was previously called Copa NYC. Uh, we attached it to New York Department of Parks and the mayor's office. And once we did that, it just exploded. New York is so unique in the fact that you have over 200 nationalities here, so it seemed perfect and the timing was right to set up a tournament where everyone could represent their country away from home and uh, the sport of soccer is the most popular in the city. What happens is we put the onus on the communities to go out and find uh, a president who's going to take the responsibility to go out into the community and find the best players find the crowd, help out. I mean, we're, we have an amazing support staff in our office and we promote it, uh, but the reality is that the teams go out there and get their own sponsors, they get their own crowd, and they look for the best players of the communities they represent. Uh, once a team is, there's 22 people on the roster, once that's sorted, uh, they, they apply, and we're very strict with that rule because we don't want, we want everyone to be representing the heritage they claim they're from. future plan? Well, Cosmos have taken it over. It's now called Cosmos Copa. Uh, we plan to grow it organically, so we want to keep the quality of play very high. Uh, if you notice, there's one noticeable difference this year as the past three years is the quality of play. And we'll grow it as much as we can within the parameters that we're given with the park system, because our partner of New York City Parks. Um, it's a huge and very important part of the uh, grassroots strategy for the New York Cosmos moving forward. And once we become a professional team in MLS, the, com uh, the community component is, is what's going to drive our fans and the passion of the brand and, and the team moving forward. You can't talk about the Cosmos Copa without talking about the New York Cosmos, once considered one of the most glamorous soccer teams in the world. Now they're making a comeback. The New York Cosmos were founded in 1971 and competed in the North American Soccer League. They were the strongest franchise in the league, boasting players such as Giorgio Canaglia, Franz Beckenbauer, Carlos Alberto, and of course Pele. The team dissolved after the league folded in 1984. There have been numerous attempts to revive the club, and now they're making a comeback with a great team in place. It's, it's all very, very surreal, but the uh, concept of starting the New York Cosmos and bringing it back to, you know, to life was a crazy idea we had some three years ago. And what you're now seeing is the, the beginning of that, I suppose. I feel, I feel very good. You know, I thank God to be again here, because no doubt you know, what, what we're doing for, for the United States, for the youngs, for the sport, is a fantastic. There's no doubt the Cosmos created quite the stir in New York and around the world. One of the original members of the team was Bronx goalkeeper Shep Messing. Shep played seven years in the North American Soccer League and made his debut with the Cosmos on May 20th, 1974. It really was more than anybody's written about it or made movies about it. It was better than that because it, it really was just spontaneous combustion. Uh, we were just a bunch of uh, semi-pro guys in the greatest city in the world playing soccer because we loved it. And, and then all of a sudden, we woke up and Pele's on our team. And then Giorgio Canaglia and Carlos Alberto and, and Franz Beckenbauer. So it was magical. Pele joined the Cosmos on June 10, 1975, a move that would change the face of soccer in the United States. Pele, more than anybody, embraced us all and lifted us up and said, it, it, it's still just soccer, so pass the ball, move, tackle, and uh, it was beautiful. It, it was beautiful because these were the greatest players in the history of the game, 
they were from all over. Uh, think about a team with uh, Germans and Brazilians and Peruvian and American, and, and, and that's the beauty of soccer, right? It, it transcends culture and religion and race, and, and that's what the New York Cosmos did. I asked Shep what his most memorable moment was. Well, I think, I think for me, and I think I speak for the other guys on that team, it, it would have to be Pele's final game, because he, here's a guy, a legendary, that came to America, that captured the imagination of the United States and the world playing for the New York Cosmos, but we still had to win a championship. We wanted him to go out with the championship cup, and, and it came down to his final season, and we hadn't won, and we were in the playoffs, and we all felt it. It was, it was unspoken, but you could feel it, the tension. And, and in the locker room before the, the, his final game, a championship we played against Seattle, uh, we all gathered around the locker room and Pele said, one more game, just, and, and there were tears for all of us. So I still get emotional thinking about it, but we had that responsibility. He had done so much for the sport. He had elevated uh, the New York Cosmos into a global team. We had to win. And win they did with a 2-1 victory over the Seattle Sounders in front of 35,000 fans. What we did, we did at a moment in time in the 70s in New York. Uh, what the new New York Cosmos are doing, uh, it's relevant to today. So, it, you know, we're thrilled. And, uh, you know, we thought it was that once in a lifetime moment. And uh, fortunately, we're seeing it happen again.